Hello, uh, welcome back. So today this is the tutorial for this mouse. Um, here's the crease pattern for it. Um, and again, like the turtle, I'll put it, the link in, in the description. Uh, if you haven't folded the, if this is your first time with the crease pattern, it might be a little bit hard. Although, I mean, I will be walking through it. Um, if you want to fold a little bit easier one, this the turtle crease pattern is a little bit easier. You can um, click on the link here or description or something. For this one, it's a little easier. Um, but if you want to just you know stick around, maybe try something a little harder, or you know just follow the follow as I fold it. That's totally fine too. This one was was made from printer paper, um, so the printer paper definitely works. Uh, I would not recommend something too thin. Like this one, uh, yes, this was a slightly different design, but it's um, double tissue and it 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 worked okay, but um, it's not my favorite. But then also you don't want it too thick. I also recommend that you tr try to avoid um, uh, duo sheets. So this one is an old version of the design. So it was folded from red and white kami, and you can see that the white shows up. Which um, personally, I'm not. I don't like it that much. So I'm. This one is. It is should be the same quality as kami, but except it's um, it's the one in the pack that's white on both sides. So I'm just using that. Um, I have to say about about the paper size. Um, Printed paper size does work. Uh, if you want to use something smaller, uh, you probably could. Um, but it's just the problem is that when we try to do the toes, uh, smaller paper will have a hard time with that. Um, and also, you don't you probably don't want it too big um, because then it looks it ends up kind of flat. Right? We want it to well, if it's a little thicker, we can get more of a 3D body. So this model has been around for a long time, and um, the first one that I folded was maybe like six years ago. I have since then lost it, but I have the picture of it still. And over the time, over the, the you know, over the time, um, I've changed the structure and then changed the, sh the shaping a lot. So this thing is a lot different from here. All right. So um, here's the crease pattern. So again, we're gonna we're gonna start by um, making a grid. So you notice that for the most part, it's gonna be um, is two units wide. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the, there's 12 thick units. So we can say for the most part it's going to be a 12 by 12 grid. The only exception is down here where it gets into 20 fourths. And so we'll address, and then, oh, and of course the middle part's a little whack, but you know, we'll, we'll address all of that um, accordingly. So we're just going to start with a 12 by 12 grid. And uh, yeah, so the 12 is 3 times 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it into the thirds first. And then fold it into fourths. So um, here's how to fold it into thirds. So we could estimate it, or we could use some math. And I'll, I'll give a brief explanation why this works after we do it. Or, or of course, we could use a ruler, but you know we don't have to. So I'm going to fold it um, in half here, and I'm going to fold it diagonally, but um, kind of lightly because we don't really want too many extra creases if we can avoid it. So I'm just going to fold, you know, just pinch this area over here. That's all I got. Yep. And now I'm going to fold a line that goes from this point in the corner up to this, this point up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it in half and then go over like this. And I'm not going to make the whole crease. I only want where it intersects with the other diagonal. It's about there. All right. And we will find that this point where they intersect is one third. So if I fold a line that intersects this point, like that, this line is going to be one third of the square. And to see it, here we go. Here's the cut them in half. And of course, it might not be perfect, but um, just, I mean, yeah, we don't need it to be super exact. See, look, see, so that's, um, that's pretty close to one third. And uh, if you want to, maybe I'll cut this out, but here's a brief explanation. So what we had here was we had our diagonal line going down this way, so we can call that, so we said this is zero, zero, this is up here is one, 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 zero, and zero, one. You know, like a coordinate grid, right? So, what is this line? This line is 
it goes negative x plus one. Okay, and then we also, here's our square. Okay, then we also had the halfway point. So what is the slope of this line? This is y equals two x. Now, if, when we go ahead and find their intersection, so two x is equal to negative x plus one, you know, because they're both equal to y, set them equal to each other, and then so do some algebra, equals one, and so we find that the x coordinate is one third, and of course the y coordinate is two thirds. So that's there we go. All right, now let's continue on our grid. So we have thirds, thirds um, vertically. Now we want to have the thirds horizontally. So I'm just going to fold it up to up to this point here, where um, we already the point that we found through the intersections. This. Does that help? Yeah. Like that. All right, and then fold back to that point, or back to the line. So here's our three by three grid. Um, and again, as as with the last time we did a crease pattern, at this at this stage, it doesn't matter whether we're doing mountain folds or valley folds. So now we're folding six, so we're, just f we're dividing all the sections in half. Um, and again, what you want to be doing is you want to be folding away from you, and then the crease, you know, the, so the crease is on your side of the paper. And you want to fold it, um, yeah, just fold it away from you and up to the reference point. So I'm folding, you know, to take the paper and fold up to where you need it to go. So for example, here, my reference line is the one third line. So when I fold the edge up to the one-third line, I get a one-sixth, if that makes any sense. There we go. Now I've got the six by six grid, and we're going to go ahead and fold them, all, um, fold it all in half, and get to the twelve by twelve grid. So, yeah. Alright, so now that we got our grid, we're going to go ahead and um, start doing some of the other parts of the crease pattern. So, first thing we can do is we can do this 24th bit. So, yeah, we're just going to make th um, one, we're just going to make two lines, two extra creases, because um, only this bottom part is in 24ths. So, we're just going to, we just have, we, yeah, so I'm just going to fold, you know, up to the 12th line. and then up to, you know, again, and there we go. All right, and again, I'm, I'm going to try to make them all mountains. For now, um, I just find that to be the most helpful. Okay, next, um, we can go ahead and we can, uh, I'm going to put off this, this part for a while, and then we're going to go ahead and start with the diagonals. So um, I'm going to flip them over. So we're going to continue making mountain folds. And I'm going to start on the top part of the crease pattern, the head. So rather than, so we're going to take the part that's not does not have the twenty fourths. Um, so we can count two big units, so one, two, and then this the one starts. And this diagonal line is two big units, um, two big units long. So starting from here, I'm just going to uh, mountain fold two units long, starting from two big units down. There we go. That's pretty good. Yep. All right, and then the next one it goes back up two units, and then some one units, and then back down. So I'm just going to go ahead and do do that.
is down over here, and two units back up. Now let's do the diagonal creases down here. So, uh, so as you can see, it goes two units up, and then four units down, four big units down, and then back up and down. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, great. So next, what we can do is, is we're gonna go ahead and do these triangle things again, which you might actually, if you might recognize them from the turtle crease pattern, it's the same same trick. So what this what it will do is it'll allow us to have thick pleats running all you know, running through the body, but then it'll allow us to have thin pleats um, on the feet to allow us to get the the detailed toes. And so these triangles allow um, it's conversion, so to speak, between the big pleats and then the thinner pleats. So we're going to go ahead and um, pre-crease these triangles. So it's, it's a, sl a slope of negative one-third this way, right? starting from this this point, right? and then a slope of negative one, it's negative two, and then a slope of one-half. There we go. And then same thing over here. So and again, um, mountain or valley doesn't quite matter yet. Great. Um, now we're almost done. Now we just gotta address this these weird parts. This crease pattern is a little bit different than what's in the drive. So what's in the drive will give you, in the Google Drive, will give you a crease pattern for this kind of back. So it's one big pleat. Um, so you get a bunch of those, like one row of spikes. Um, I found it a little bit better to do two rows of spikes. So you get, it looks a little bit, I think it looks a little bit better this way. So um, you can just follow along. They're basic, otherwise um, the crease patterns are the same. Um, but w either way, you'll notice that they don't actually lie on the grid lines. You'll notice that they actually divide um, this section. So this is one third of the square, so four twelfths, and it takes it and divides that section into thirds. So um, here's one third, and then two thirds, and then the third third, and then furthermore, it, and then it divides it into sixths. So um, this is going to be one sixth of the section, uh, another sixth, and then you know right, it divides into six equal sections. So we're gonna we're gonna try to do that. Um, and again, by when I say sixths, I mean I mean sixths of the third. So we're really dividing the paper into eighteenth, eighteenths. Um, but uh, unlike last time when we did the math, this time we're just going to estimate it because it's not as important. Because um, if the pleats are a little bit off, it only affects that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate. Um, I'm going to estimate just one one third of this. So this line. Um, so four units, we're going to take the four units and fold it, not to fold that. Um, and we're going to try to fold it one third of the way to this other line, so four units. Um, so see this Now, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to estimate. So it might help to look at the side. So that's about one third of the way. And if you want to be really, if you want to know that you're really doing it well, I don't know if you can see, but um, where the diagonal line that I just made, where it touches in between this unit, so here's a unit, and it should land about a third of the way. So see how it lands like right here, about a third of the way? So that's how you know that you estimated pretty well. 
So that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna make the crease nice and sharp. Great. Okay. Um, so there, there's our one ninth. Sorry. Yeah. So that's one ninth. Now I'm going to fold this line back up to this one. This line. Now we've got our thirds. Um, so now, now we got to make the um, now. We, now we're going to start caring about mountain and valley. So we see that this we got a, a mountain at one sixth, and then valley at one third, and then mountain at fourth six, and then valley at, at five six. So here is our our one third line or two six, and we want this one to be. I want it to be valley. So I'm going to go ahead and, and so again, assuming this is the top, I'm going to go on the back and just reverse the crease. So now from this side, we can look at it as a valley. And now we want a mountain above it. So I'm um, going from the back. It might It's going to look like a valley from, the, from this side, but from the other side that we really care about, it's going to look like a valley or a uh, mountain, sorry. So now we got our right there. We got our pleat. Um, okay, and then and then now we you have a mountain next. So this one that we had earlier that we want this was supposed to be a mountain. So let's make that mountain real quick. And we want to have a valley underneath it. So that that um, that's halfway in between this line and this line. So let's go ahead and. So now we've got our two back pleats. Um, and if you're following the crease pattern, you can you can do um, one big back pleat, and it'll look okay also. Okay, so we've pre-creased it, and now the next step is to collapse. And so what that means is we're going to basically going to make it look like this this um, oops, you can see this thing, which the um, the computer uh, the computer collapsed the crease pattern, and then it figured out that it's going to look like this. So in, bas in basically one step, we're going to take this this paper with all the pre creases, and we're going to turn it into this. Um, and so some people would like this step a lot, some people don't. But either way, it can be pretty um, difficult for beginners. So uh, I'm going to try to do the best I can to explain it. Um, one thing we can start off with is that we see there's a mountain that runs all the way across, and the valley that runs all the way underneath un underneath it. So we can make a mountain here and then a valley underneath it, and we know this is not going to be interrupted, so this is going to stay. All right, um, next we can see that there's a mountain that runs through here. Um, so we can, I guess we can sort of start with that, but it doesn't go all the way, right? It only goes up to the diagonal. And so um, you can try to f look, at the, um, look at the crease pattern and try to figure it out for yourself, or you can just um, watch as I collapse it. Um, oh, another note. So down, I'm going to ignore these, this triangle. I'm just going to pretend that this is a mountain. Um, I'm just going to pretend that this is, you know, there's no triangle. There is no 24. So like that. And then at, with, at the point where it, it um, touches the diagonal line, the, cre the, the, um, the pleat starts going vertical. There's our vertical. If that makes any sense. So. We got that much, right? Now we go ahead and keep going. Okay. Cool. So that I it might have made it look easy. I mean, some of you who already know this know how to collapse crease patterns should have no problem. But if you're if you're new to crease patterns, um, that might have seemed very strange. One thing you'll notice is that on the diagonals, it alternates valley, mountain, valley, mountain. And then also the pleats, the, uh, both vertical and horizontal, alternate mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. You know. um, yeah, so that's, that's something that uh, usually applies. 
Again, this is a box splitting crease pattern. There are other types of crease patterns, but this is um, the easiest one to get started with. So you notice that the paper doesn't it doesn't really lie flat until you finish the whole entire thing. That's why some people describe it as like one step. And here we go. So once you've collapsed the whole thing, it should turn into this flat little strip, kind of like what the computer predicted. Um, although ours does look a little bit different um, because we haven't done you know this stuff yet, the, the bottom part. This is what it should look like. You should have three points on top. So this one's going to be nose, ears. You should have two longer ones on the sides. Those are the hands or the arms. Here's the back legs and then the tail. Now we're going to go ahead and take care of these um, the these pleats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the legs forward. And you see we are al already um, pre-creased this. So when we fold it down, it shouldn't be too hard. And then we also see um, that we've already pre-creased the triangle. So when we just oh, when we squash fold it. The triangle should appear along the lines that we um, already previous, just like that, nice and easy. Okay, now we can fold it back up. This whole, this whole thing, fold it back up, and we're going to do a thing called a closed sink, which basically means open one layer up like that, and then you can just push the thing through, just like that. You see now it alternates mountain valley, mountain valley, just kind of, just as it does. All right, and then we're going to do all that on the other side. So hold the leg forward, this thing down, the triangle appears. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, then, then we can go ahead and do the back. So what we want is we want it to have a nice kind of curled, or you know, like a hunched back kind of shape. So uh, certain papers might be able to do this easier than others. But basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to grab it by grab the pleat by uh, one on each side and just simply pull it apart like that. So uh, I'm a, I, I like to start in the middle, and then so just grab him and pull it open. And the paper is not going to lie flat until you finish all the pleats in the row, and you got to pull them out about the same about the same angle. here so hopefully yours works hopefully it's able to lie flat yeah okay, it looks okay um, and you can just eyeball the angle um, and we might change it later like if it if it's not as hunched back as I want it to be then I'll go back and and re re bend it or redo this. There you go. So there's the first row. Now let's go ahead and do the second row. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so the the ones on the outer on the edges are actually a little bit strange. That's why I like to start in the middle. You have to be very gentle here. If you if you pull too hard, it's uh, likely going to rip for certain papers. Hmm. Yeah, I might end up going back into bending the back a little more. Uh, 
looks okay. We'll see. Anyways, um, now we can go ahead and start shaping the legs. So let's maybe we can start with uh, this one on the right side. So we're gonna fold. Or actually, we got to do the toes first. So see how the toes are kind of sharp, or at least separated. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, what what you might remember, or you might um, want to keep in mind, is that we want to if we want a twenty two and a half degree angle, um, the ratio. You know, I'll just math time again. All right. So if we have a triangle that is twenty two and a half degrees, if this this side is one, this side is going to be about two point five. Uh, and you can use that with uh, tangent tangent functions to test it out. So, th but the reason why we're going to use that is because um, if I want the twenty-two degree half degree angle toes, um, and my height of the triangle is one, then the other side needs to be two and a half. So, here's this this thing is two units long. This rectangle is two units. So, this, if I'm making any sense, here's this would be a third unit. So three square units, and I wanted about half of that. So I'm going to make a crease approximately from this point, that's two and a half point, down to this corner. And that will give me about 22 and a half degree angle. And again, um, if it's a little bit off, it, it's not a huge deal. Okay, so then that, that allows me to fold it down like this. Now I fold it back up. Is it focused? That's good enough. All right, and then back down. All right, and that allows me. So you see, I was a little bit off with the angles, but when we shape it, it will be pretty insignificant. So there we go. We had our sharpened toe. And now one more, or one more pleat. So again, about two and a half. Okay, so and we can go ahead and do that on the other side. I'll probably do that later. Um, oops. All right. Um, now I'm going to do. Well, you know, let's do just do this now. So now I'm going to do a double rabbit ear fold. So what that means is um, we're going to have a diagonal valley fold like this, diagonal valley fold like this, and then valley fold like this, and then mountain here. Um, I'll show you what that means. So let's go ahead and do the diagonal valley folds first. I, was, I guess you could call it pre-creasing, but it's really not. Um, oh, and by the way, it looks like my thing got out of the way a little bit. If you're, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this corner back. So this not in the way. Again, not a super big deal. Um, now let's do the other diagonal fold. All right, and then we can pre-crease this valley, this other long one. What that does is it will narrow our leg. So we don't really, yeah. Narrow our leg. And that's good enough for now. All right, let's go to the front leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to squash it down. So mountain folds all along here on both sides. There we go. So you notice how uh, only the first, this is one layer thick. Alright. It's not quite there. Cool. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to pedal fold it upwards. So what that means is it's going to thin out the leg. So this edge is going into the center, like that. And then we got some diagonal valley folds at the bottom. This side also goes into the center. And then the whole thing goes down. Great. Um, and we're going to do the same thing 
Uh, so we're going to sharpen the toes again. So again, two and a half would be about here, where my nail is. So I'm just going to estimate And then inside reverse fold back out, and inside reverse fold back in. And so you'll see this, um, you'll see techniques like this all the time. So a lot of models that have fingers, um, you'll see it's basically you take a pleat, you know, like the pleats, and then you inside reverse fold in and out, and that'll give you the fingers. So like um, the model that you see in my profile picture, the one that's supposed to look like me or something like that um, which has kind of messy hands but these fingers are done the same way so they have yeah, there's a pleat and then you inside reversal in and out at a uh, 22 and a half degree angles or like um yeah cool right, you know I'll just leave them here in the background uh, yeah, so that, that's good enough for the first leg or for the front leg. Now we're going to do what we did uh, for these two legs and we're going to do them again over here. So I'm going to start by throwing this tip down. Alright, and then toes. So 22 and a half. And then the double rabbit here. Here we go. And now front leg. So again, start the squash. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and do the neck. Um, so again, the neck took me a while to figure out. I've experimented a number of times. Uh, what I find to be the best as of right now is um, we're going to make a whole bunch of crimps. Um, and so we're going to do one crimp that makes the neck go upward, and then we're going to do it again that makes it go back down. And so what's that going to do is kind of, you know, it's going to look something like this. So we'll raise the head a little bit. But um, so what we're going to do is to pre-crease it. Uh, we're going to make, we're going to have mounted folds here and then valley at a 22 and a half degree angle. So, and I'm going to try to do it symmetrically. So here's a, here's a um, mountain and then the valley about that much. And then same on the other side, mountain, valley. And then we got to pre-crease it pretty sharp or just got to hold it down pretty sharp. All right, and now I guess what we can do is we can loosen each layer, so that way it's less likely to come apart, as if the, rather than if we did it all at once. There we go. That's nice and clean. Um, I guess you could do some shaping with these pleats if you don't. Anyways, next what we're going to do is we're going to do the 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 sort on the head. So grab the ears, pull it, just kind of swing it up. And just kind of 
make sure it's opening okay and kind of land it close again and that's pretty good all right and then I suppose I didn't do it here but I suppose if you want you could um, try to fold these yeah and maybe later okay now what, now what we're gonna do is we're going to make the head we're gonna narrow this the snout a little bit so on the bottom I'm just I'm going to fold about like this um, and we can't really inside reverse fold it uh, not symmetrically at least but at least take the first um, layer and cover it so it doesn't look like we just mounted folded it um, as I said before there's a number of ways you could shape it um, I've seen some people shape this better than I can so if that's if that's you and you feel like there's a better way to shape this then by all means so the, now I'm going to so this is uh, about halfway I'm just going to pre-crease that and then once we do that we'll inside reverse fold it okay ears so the ears of I always struggled with also um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mounted fold here and then just barely uh, crimp it to the side. And the same thing over here. So what this does is it gives us a little bit more definition or I guess you could say definition between the ears and the face. And then of course you have to, it, it pleats on the inside too. Like this didn't stick. There we go. Okay, now we want to get the ears kind of circular, kind of. So, you know, think Mickey Mouse. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and kind of go like that, kind of. And then, kind of just open, like, you know, get your finger in there make it kind of round and then fold the tip down. Um, I'm going to inside reverse fold a little bit like there. Maybe a little bit more. That looks alright. And then again on the other side. So this is a shaping you find that shaping is mostly eyeballing things trying to figure out how much how much you you like it or not so shaping can be pretty subjective and um and the more the more diagrams and videos you follow through the better of a sense of shaping you'll be able to get and then eventually you'll be able to just see the crease pattern and without so getting any help shaping, you can collapse the crease pattern and then shape the rest of the way yourself. Um, I think I'm going to go in here and try to do this that I mentioned earlier. Aha. Got him. The other side. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Looking pretty good on the head. Um, now we're going to go ahead and work on the tail. So uh, you see that the, the legs don't actually touch the body about like until like about halfway, right? So that means we can actually take advantage of that by reverse folding. Um, we can just reverse fold straight through this. Um, I'm going to make kind of a shallow angle. I don't really want it too steep uh, because especially because we don't really want it to get I'm going to I'll reverse fold this out of the way just a, just a tad. Like, like that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Alright and now we're going to thin out the tail. So um, if your paper is too thick, you might have a hard time, but um, if your paper is thin enough, you can, or actually if your paper is thinner than mine, you could probably do 
um, some interesting tail shaping. Uh, printer paper, on printer paper it's kind of hard to get anything more than just like a simple little curve. But if you have like thinner paper, um, this one's a little bit thinner than printer paper, but I still don't think I can do a whole lot. If you have like double tissue or something, you, you can probably go and do some like weird up and down, you know, like Eric Joyzel kind of wrap stuff. Um, I'm going to sharpen the tail a little bit. Um, just make it as skinny as possible because rat or mice and rats have pretty skinny tails. I used to, uh, or you could you could try going for a squirrel and making like a thicker tail, but it's a little harder. There you go. Kind of just roll it up, make it thin. Um, you know, and then we're gonna, you know, squiggle it around. I, I don't know vocab. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then again, we can always come back to the tail. Um, what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna go ahead and do the legs. So what we want is we want some nice, some nice thighs. And then the feet, because uh, if you look at rats, they it looks like they're sitting on like really long feet. I don't know if that's like their knees or what's going on, but um, so there's the thigh, and then I'm gonna fold it forward. Um, about you know about like maybe like that much, okay, and then thin it out, and so you will have to do some swivels in there, a little small swivel, and that's good, that will actually lock it in. That's pretty good. Um, and then same on the other side. All right, uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna do this the top arm first. So now for the top arm, I'm just going to fo valley fold it forward. And then the toes is pretty simple up here, so they're all going to be bending the same direction. Uh, I find this way is pretty good. All bending them, all three toes, in this direction is pretty, pretty good. Uh, this first one I'm not going to bend all the way, so I leave a little gap. Some nice, um, nice cloth. Maybe she use tweezers next time. There you go. Yeah, good enough. All right, now let's repeat those two steps on the other side. Is it actually looking? Looks pretty nice, right? So over here, so again, fold the thing back to make the thighs, and then forward. There you go. Okay, now thin, thin the I guess, foot, I guess. And you might have to see, here's what it looks like from the back when you're swiveling it. Yeah, that's good enough. And then we're going to spread out the toes in a little bit. So up here, same thing. All right, let's give tweezers a try. Um, all right, let's go ahead and feet here. So there's no there's no one way to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to turn them. So right now they're they're like lined up horizontal, kind of. And I'm going to try to make them so they're kind of stacked vertically. 
like that. So just turn it a little bit. And then now what that allows me to do is I can spread them out. So nice and easy. Pull them apart just like that. Now we can curl the, the toes. Um, yeah, I actually don't know how many toes mice have in real life, but as long as you kind of show that they have some. Here we go. Okay, and then repeat on the other side. So we're gonna try to make it kind of, kind of flattened out. Curl the toes. There we go. And now I should be able to sit on, or stand up on these legs, or not. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then I guess the back, um, you know, there's a number of ways you could do the back also. If you did it in one big fat pleat, you, could, you would just do a whole bunch of inside reverse folds. See like this. Um, here, I'm not quite sure what would be the best way. I think it looks okay just with that, but I suppose you could go ahead and reverse fold. Um, yeah, I don't know. It looks fine to me. Maybe I'll just spread them out a little bit. Maybe down here would be a good place to spread that out. Just unlock the layers. Now it's a little, little bit more 3D. Anyway, so that's about it. Um, the yeah, I think we're about done. So yeah, thanks for um, thanks for watching, and I hope it actually worked for you. Uh, if it did, you should post it either Instagram, Discord, anywhere, and then tag me so I can see it. Because um, I'd really love to see what you guys can do from the videos. Uh, hopefully, again, you got some more practice with the crease patterns because, again, the end goal is for you to be able to fold from just, just the crease pattern because that will help you unlock a whole bunch of models that um, don't have diagrams or videos, which is quite a lot. Um, so if you're looking for more crease patterns, you can check out the link in the description. There's a, there's a Google Drive that um, has a whole bunch from myself um, as well as from other designers too. And um, there's also some other good links in the description that you should check out. And uh, yeah, so until, until then, I'll see you next time.